New physics, the latest results from CERN further boost tantalizing evidence this is by Harry Cliff, particle physicist, University of Cambridge, on the conversation. The Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN sparked worldwide excitement in March as particle physicists reported tantalizing evidence for new physics, potentially a new form of matter. Now are new results yet to be peer-reviewed from CERN's gargantuan particle collider seem to be adding further support to the idea. Our current best theory of particles and forces is known as the standard model, which describes everything we know about the physical stuff that makes up the world around us with unerring accuracy. The standard model is without doubt the most successful scientific theory ever written down, and yet at the same time we know it must be incomplete. Famously, it describes only three of the four fundamental forces, the electromagnetic force and strong and weak forces, leaving out gravity. It has no explanation for the dark matter that astronomy tells us dominates the universe and cannot explain how matter survived during the Big Bang. Most physicists are therefore confined that there must be more cosmic ingredients yet to be discovered and studying a variety of fundamental particles known as beauty quarks is a particularly promising way to get hints of what else might be out there. Beauty quarks, sometimes called bottom quarks, are fundamental particles which in turn make up bigger particles. There are six flavors of quarks that are dubbed up, down, strange, charm, beauty bottom, and truth top. Up and down quarks, for example, make up the protons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus. Beauty quarks are unstable, living on average just for about 1.5 trillionths of a second before decaying into other particles. The way beauty quarks decay can be strongly influenced by the existence of other fundamental particles or forces. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. And when a beauty quark decays, it transforms into a set of lighter particles, such as electrons, through the influence of a weak force. One of the ways a new force of nature might make itself known to us is by subtly changing how often beauty quarks decay into different types of particles. The March paper was based on data from LHCb experiment, one of four giant particle detectors that record the outcome of the ultra-high energy collisions produced by LHC. The B in LHCb stands for beauty. It found that beauty quarks were decaying into electrons and their heavier cousins called muons at different rates. This was truly surprising because according to the standard model, the muon, M-U-O-N, is basically a carbon copy of the electron, identical in every way except for being around 200 times heavier. This means that all the forces should pull out on electrons and muons with equal strength when a beauty quark decays into electrons or muons via the weak force, it ought to do so equally often. Instead, my colleagues found that the muon decay was only happening about 85% as often as the electron decay. Assuming the result is correct, the only way to explain such an effect would be if some new force of nature that pulls on electrons and muons differently is interfering with how beauty quarks decay. The result caused huge excitement among particle physicists. We've been searching for signs of something beyond the standard model for decades, and despite 10 years of work at the Large Hadron Collider CERN, nothing conclusive has been found so far. So discovering a new force of nature would be a huge deal, and could finally open up the door to answering some of the deepest mysteries facing modern science. New results? While the result was tantalizing, it was not conclusive. All measurements come with a certain degree of uncertainty or error. In this case, there was only one, uh, there was only around one in a thousand chance that the result was down to random statistical wobble or three sigma, as we say in particular in particle physics parla parlance. 
and one in a thousand may not sound like a lot, but we make a very large number of measurements in particle physics, so you might expect a small handful to throw up outliners just by random chance. To be really sure that the effect is real, we need to get to five sigma, corresponding to less than a one, one in a million chance of the effect being down to a cruel statistical fluke. To get there, we need to reduce the size of the error, and to do this, we need more data. One way to achieve this is simply to run the experiment for longer and record more decays, and the LHCB experiment is currently being upgraded to be able to record collisions at a much higher rate in the future, which will allow us to make much more precise measurements. But we can also get useful information of the data we've already recorded by looking for similar types of decays that are harder to spot. This is why my colleagues and I, what we've done, strictly speaking, we never actually study beauty quarks decays directly, since all quarks are always bound together with other quarks to make larger particles. The March study looks at a beauty quark uh, that were paired up with up quarks and our results studied two decays. One were the beauty quarks that were paired with down quarks and another where they were also paired with up quarks. That the pairing is different should not matter though. The decay that's going on deep down in the same and so we'd expect to see the same effect and if there really is a new force out there. And that's exactly what we've seen. This time, muon decays were only happening around 70% as often as the electron decays, but with a larger error, meaning that the result is about two sigma from the standard model, around a two in a hundred chance of being a statistical anomaly. This means that while the result is not precise enough on its own, to claim firm evidence for a new force, it does line up very closely with the previous result and adds further support to the idea that we might be on the brink of a major breakthrough. Of course, we should be cautious. There is some way to go still before we can claim with a degree of certainty that we really are seeing the influence of the fifth force of nature. Fifth force of nature. My colleagues are currently working hard to squeeze as much information as possible out of the existing data while busily preparing for the first run of the upgraded LHCB experiment at CERN. Meanwhile, other experiments at the LHC, as well as the Bell 2 experiment in Japan, are closing in on the same measurements. It's exciting to think that in the next few months or years, a new window could be opened on the most fundamental ingredients of our universe. This is from the conversation and its creative comments. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support concerning this fifth element of nature.